We begin this week outside the International Space Station where NASA astronauts Josh Casada and Frank Rubio upgraded the power supply. Over seven hours, the duo installed one of the station's six new solar arrays. When complete, the arrays will boost power to the station by as much as 30 percent. It was the second spacewalk by Casada and Rubio who are in space for a six-month mission, and NASA says it was the 256th spacewalk in support of the space station. Elsewhere in space, NASA's Orion capsule and its flight test dummies are heading home to Earth. After setting a new distance-from-Earth record of nearly 450,000 kilometers, the craft will splash down Sunday in the Pacific Ocean. The landing will wrap up NASA's Artemis I mission and set the stage for Artemis II and III, the latter of which will return humans to the moon after a half a century absence. Bringing us to a big anniversary, the Apollo 17 mission 50 years ago this week. On December 7, 1972, three NASA astronauts, Eugene Cernan, Harrison Schmidt, and Ron Evans, blasted off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Three days later, they reached lunar orbit. Cernan then guided the Challenger lander into a lunar valley. He and Schmidt spent more than three days on the moon and spent nearly one full day total outside the lander. On December 14, 1972, Cernan became the last of only a dozen astronauts to moonwalk. The mission ended five days later. NASA looks to repeat its moon magic by putting humans back on the lunar surface aboard Artemis III as early as 2025. In other news, luxury automaker and engineering firm Rolls-Royce says it's designing a nuclear micro-reactor, itself a new thing that could give NASA's planned moon base power, heat, and propulsion for a future trip to Mars. Two years ago, if you'd said to me we'd be looking at designing reactors to go on the moon, I'd have said that you were absolutely barking and it was a crazy idea. But actually, as we can see kind of technology develop uh, and minerals and things that we need from the moon and actually looking at alternative planets for us to potentially habitate uh, and live on, um, noting what's happening on our, on our own planet, you know, the, the power to explore is kind of needed. So, yeah, it's a, it's a really kind of out there idea, but it's really exciting. The British firm, famous for its jet engines, spent more than 60 years building the power supplies for the UK's fleet of nuclear submarines. Rolls-Royce says it hopes to bring that experience to the modern space race. The company says its reactors could also help in disaster zones on Earth by quickly establishing power supplies that would replace carbon-emitting sources like diesel generators. Finally this week, from door cameras in beautiful Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and Cleveland, Ohio, comes security footage of a meteor streaking the night sky. The American Meteor Society says the first half of December is great for meteor sightings, with NASA estimating as many as 150 meteors per hour this time of year. Arash Arbasadi, VOA News.